Well, hello, YouTube. It's been a while. Keeping my interest in hobbies is kind of like herding cats, which is why I've dove straight into the world of ham radio. And over the past couple years, I've become licensed, and I've been trying out all sorts of different types of radios to communicate with people all around the world, and it really has been a blast. Here in the U.S., ham radio allows for folks that obtain a license from the FCC to use a wide variety of electronic devices to communicate over the airwaves. Much like how you listen to your favorite FM radio station on 106.9 megahertz or connect to your Wi-Fi on 2.4 gigahertz, us hams have a little portion of the radio spectrum carved out for our own experimental needs and it really encourages and inspires innovation in wireless electronics of all sorts. Radio consists of a plethora of modes you're probably familiar with AM and FM, but today we're going to talk about DMR, or Digital Mobile Radio. I just acquired this Radiodity GD73A Compact DMR Radio. Consider this little guy the baby brother of the GD77. It's only 2 watts and operates on UHF frequencies only making it the perfect compact low power radio to use at home with a DMR hotspot. Your performance may vary if you're trying to use this for repeaters, although I have had some luck with a couple that are only a few miles down the road. Let's take a look at what's in the box. Of course they've given us the basic instructions manual in English and in German. Keep in mind this manual has no information on how to program the radio using software on your computer. It only outlines how to use the radio itself, as well as navigate through the on-screen menu. Up next is a very basic headset. It only fits on the left ear and is not interchangeable. There is a small PTT button on this portion here, which also has the microphone on it. One thing that is neat about this is that it uses a regular 3-ring, 3.5mm cable instead of the Kenwood-style connector. So this actually passes both audio and data over the same cable. And here is a little belt clip. Notice that this clip only slips onto a belt. It does not have a little fulcrum point that normally makes it much easier to snap on things, which is a bit of a bummer. And here's a standard power brick with a micro USB cable for charging and programming. It's kind of nice not needing a proprietary programming cable or a cradle to charge this radio. So I give them some props for that. And here's the radio itself. Man, this thing is tiny. Even by handy talkie standards, this thing is just small. It has a nice rugged hard plastic just like the GD77, except there are no knobs on this, all buttons. There's some volume rockers on the side as well as the power button. And on the other side is the push to talk button and a button to turn on a flashlight, which is funny because I had no idea this thing had a flashlight on it until now. Man, I don't know what it is about guys that love flashlights on their radio, but this one has it. On top is a little flap that you can plug in your headset. And on the back, the battery has two clips that hold it in place. Really easy to take out. Now here is the GD73A compared to the GD77. It definitely weighs a lot less than the GD77. It lacks the DTMF number keys and a manual VFO for typing in frequencies. The whole purpose of this radio is to program it on your computer and use it at home. This is not a prepper radio and do not expect to get amazing range out of this thing. It was simply not designed to connect to a repeater that might be 30 miles from your house and up on a 400 foot tower. This is meant to connect to a DMR hotspot, which is essentially just a micro-repeater that connects to your internet and gives you access to thousands of talk groups around the globe. And here is my DMR hotspot, which is nothing more than a Raspberry Pi Zero computer with a special radio hat that plugs into the GPIO. 
It's all powered by a 15,000 milliamp battery that keeps it on for over two days. Okay, let's take a look at the programming software. To download the software, simply go to radiodity.com, click the support button, and find the GD73A. You'll be prompted with a little window to download the software and documentation. It is in a RAR archive file, which of course can be extracted with our favorite unregistered program, WinRAR. Now, disregard the fact that the CPS software is running in the background. Before you actually run the programming software, you do need to install the driver software first, and it can be a little tricky. Once you've extracted the RAR file, open up the USB driver folder and right click this file here and run as administrator. Thus begins the little bit of frustration I experienced with this software in general. During the installation, a couple windows appear and they are in the background of any currently open windows I have at the moment. So you do need to keep an eye out for anything that pops up on the screen and you might need to shuffle some things around in order to find their little dialogues. And once that's complete, before you install the programming software, plug in your GD73A and turn on the device. The computer will detect it, assign the newly installed driver, and then finally, you can install the programming software and run it. It'll show up in your start menu as GD-73A. So go ahead and search for it if you need to and give it a run. Now, I won't sit here and explain every single option in the programming software, but I will quickly walk you through the things absolutely necessary to get on the air. First, under our basic information, you can choose the allowable frequency ranges. I'm just going to keep it on the default, which covers all the frequencies I need uh, and the ones in particular that my hotspot is listening on. Then under the general settings is the more crucial stuff. Give your radio any name you want, but be sure to put in your actual DMR ID that you've already registered on radioid.net. I also like to customize my power on display options with a little bit of text. And here are some alert tone options and some neat settings for configuring the button behavior. And since this thing doesn't have any numeric DTMF buttons, you would need to set up some pre-configured text messages if that's something you actually want to do on DMR. Not necessary though. All right, now here's for the more important stuff. The digital contacts are going to be the talk groups that you want to access. Just type in a name and the corresponding talk group number. Keep in mind that group call is what you want to choose when adding any normal talk group. Private call is usually used for calling an individual DMR ID number for one particular individual. I'll add some of my favorite talk groups, which you should totally check out sometime. Moving on to the digital RX group list. This is yet another very important setting. If you don't configure your digital receive group lists, you won't receive any audio. I like to set up a receive group for quiet talk groups that don't have a lot of constant traffic. And by grouping all these together, it will monitor them all at the same time. For busy talk groups, I put them in their very own isolated receive group list. That way, when I'm actually on that channel, it will only receive audio from that one particular talk group. And now, of course, for the zones. A zone is another type of organizational unit of sorts that puts your talk groups in a list that you can cycle through on the radio. A common practice for zones is to create one for each repeater that you use, along with the talk groups that are available. Since I'm using this radio for just my hotspot, I'm only going to make one zone and call it hotspot. This radio supports analog too, so in some cases, I might create a zone called analog and then put all of my analog channels in there as well. And you'll notice, of course, that there are no channels yet to add to this zone. So we're going to have to skip this part for now and start adding the channels first, then come back to the zone to add them all in there. Let's go ahead and do that now. Channels consist of the frequency of the repeater or the hotspot that you're using, along with a designated talk group that you want to listen to or talk on. We're going to start off by making sure we choose the digital mode. 
then type in a channel name, the RX and TX frequencies. And in my case, I'm using the same frequency for both RX and TX as configured on my hotspot. So that part's pretty easy. Then here's the TX contact, which is basically just the contacts and talk groups that you set up earlier. Then there's the time slot and color code. These are two things that are also configured on your hotspot, so make sure you have them correct. They do need to be assigned for every channel that you add. And last but not least, the most important thing here is that RX group list assignment. Uh, that is definitely essential. You need to assign that. Uh, just by doing the grouping like we did earlier is not sufficient enough. We actually do need to make sure we specify this in each and every channel that you configure. One thing that's a little annoying with this software is that there is no way to duplicate or copy any of the channel settings to another channel. That was something that was really convenient on the GD77. You don't have to type in those TX and RX frequencies all the time uh, each time you're making a channel. But unfortunately, that is not the case in this software. You do have to manually type in all this stuff for each channel that you create. Not to mention there are a couple other little quirks with this software. For example, the tab order of fields. Once you click in a field and start typing stuff, you'd figure by hitting the tab key, it would jump to the next field in order, but in this case, it does not. If you hit tab, it might jump to some other random field here on this little form. And like I mentioned before, we're gonna revisit the zone section, circle back here and edit that hotspot zone, add in all of the channels that we just created, and then you should be good to go. The rest of these settings are not really necessary to begin talking, but feel free to peruse them to see if anything is applicable to you. Then when you're finished, be sure to save your configuration, also known as a code plug. It will place a file on your computer, so save it somewhere safe. And lastly, it's time to write this code plug to the radio. Again, make sure your radio is on and plugged into your computer. Then click the little radio icon with the red arrow on it, and it's gonna bring up this window, which again is not very descript, but you do have to click OK to begin the process. Perhaps a start button or maybe a begin button might have been a little bit better because honestly, I sat here for like five minutes while nothing happened, but I eventually got impatient and clicked the OK button, which did initiate the whole process. All right, we're all set. Now I'm just gonna try a little transmit test to see if my hotspot is actually picking up the signal. And as you can see, it's showing up just fine here at the top, K3WOC. Now I'm gonna walk you through the menu on the radio real quick, which is really self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna really do any talking over this, but you're more than welcome to take a quick look and pause if necessary. And then at the end, we're gonna do a quick QSO to see how the GD73A performs. Isolated, lonely, and heavily medicated Having difficulty concentrating Here we go again Been waiting too long for something to come my way Maybe just a break But I keep losing sight and giving in The past weighs heavy While the present keeps the pressure steady The future's not looking so bright for me W1FJF, this is K3WOC. Yeah, Thanks so much for the quick comeback there, Fred. I appreciate that. The name is Mark uh, here in Ocean City, Maryland. I was just testing out a new compact radio and uh, see if this thing is uh, working. Yeah, it looks like it's getting out there. It's a little tiny 2 watt UHF radio, uh, mostly designed for just hotspot use. 
So I just wanted to see if it's working and uh, definitely coming in loud and clear, my friend. Uh, well, thank you, Fred. W1FJF, this is K3WOC, 7-3. N3GLV, K3WOC, you still there, Jeff? N3GLV. All right, everybody, well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks so much for taking a look at the GD73A from Radiotity, little pocket DMR radio. This thing is pretty sweet. I've been using it for about a week now, and the battery is fantastic on this thing. It lasts for several days without me not having to charge it, so that is uh, one of the reasons why I got this thing. And it's just great to keep right here on my desk, right next to my hotspot. Anytime I want to hop on DMR, it's right there for me. Now, again, it's not going to be great for repeater use. Uh, two watts is not very much to get out. But you could probably stand, you know, a few miles from a repeater and hit it up if you really wanted to. But uh, this thing was designed for hotspot use, so don't expect major range on this thing at all. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for sticking around here on my channel, too. I know this is a, a new subject to cover here on my channel, but I do like ham radio. I do like communication in general, so it, uh, it is a lot of fun, and the hobby's been fantastic and really interesting to learn. So if you're not into ham radio yet, you should by all means check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. I uh, know I haven't got a chance to get around to some of those Raspberry Pi videos, but I did start a new job working for a software company, so it's been keeping me rather busy lately. And now that summertime is here, I'm gigging uh, every weekend here in Ocean City, uh, playing shows at bars and restaurants and hotels and just having a blast. But you guys have a great day, and thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you on the next one. Take care.